thanks so much for tuning in this week to this Georgia Clay. So I wanted to go over our first project. Um, this video is a little bit different. It's our very first DIY. Anyone that knows Matt and I, we are not the best at doing this, but we have found motivation in this project and we've moved over to different projects in our home. So let's get into it. So make sure that you guys watch all the way through because I'll reveal how our kitchen island came out. So as you guys can see, this was our kitchen before anything was done to it. So just starting off with that builder grade island with the drywall in the behind. So we decided to change things up a bit and take a trip to our local Home Depot. Anyone that knows me, I hate Home Depot, but I love it now. So for this project, we started off with some one by four prime wood. We also utilize a Ryobi uh, miter saw. So that's something that we purchased that's new. That little gadget right there is a trim board crowbar. We needed some caulk, some liquid nails, a leveler, and those things were really good for our knees. It really helped out a lot. And we got those from Walmart. I think they were like six bucks each. We also needed some sanders, some plastic wood that we used, and some nails for a new Brad nailer that we got. And that was the battery for our Ryobi tool. And then we need a black paint. Each black sample that I got, I got those from um, Bear Paints and they were very similar. So we just chose black paint by Mayor, uh, Bear. So what motivated us to do this project is that I wanted something, as you guys know, watching the whole process with us, um, that I was a little disappointed that Fisher did not offer to um, do the front of my island. Like I, I paid for the upgrade to have the contrasting island of the white um, around the perimeter, but then the island was supposed to be black. Well, you couldn't see it because on the other side of it was just that white drywall. So it was driving me crazy and I um, wanted to get some quotes from a local construction um, person or, or DIY, uh, not DIY, but a local handyman to do it. But the bids were coming in extremely like $2,000 or even, you know, I think my mother-in-law found an, an option for maybe like three or 400 bucks, but it was just like a shiplap with some MDF board. But I wanted something that was a little bit different, but also tied in the shaker cabinets that we had. So Matt and I just got motivated and watched some YouTube videos. You know, YouTube is um, our friend. So we watched some YouTube videos and found an option for us. So let's get into the video and you'll be able to see at the very end, again, no peeking, make sure that you stay to the very end and you'll be able to see how beautiful my island came out. All right, so this is the moment when we decide, okay, we're gonna do it, let's go for it. So you see Matt looking a little confused as to how we get the baseboards off. So here we go. So first you have to score the um, caulk. So yeah, we're just kind of trying to figure it out. And um, yeah, there's no turning back at this point. Oh. Yeah, we were like super nervous, so. Okay, so at this point, there's no turning back. Um, I was a little scared because I didn't know how the project was gonna be, but I knew that the island was already destroyed at this point, so we couldn't put it back on. So we have no choice but to move forward. Um, but as the, prog the project started to go on, it just, you got, I felt better and better about it. But this part most definitely was the most intimidating. So take it from me guys, and like, like I said, by no means are we experts in this. We're just kind of figuring it out, out as we go. And um, just be honest with yourself. Know that it's not gonna be perfect, but enjoy it. And uh, yeah, so let's get back into the video and see what we started to do. Okay, so again, we're starting to score the cock. Um, that's the only way that you're able to get the baseboards. And look at me, I just popped that off like that. I was a little scared, like, oh my gosh, what's going on? And then that piece right there was just the um, paint. So just regular latex paint that they use and it just came off a little bit, so no problem there. But trust me, I was nervous when I saw that paint pop. So Matt's working on the other side, trying to get it off. Then it comes over and I just loosened it up for him and then he would come with that trim pry bar, which was actually a blessing to have that little smaller one because I've seen larger ones, but sometimes you can mess up and nick your wood. So that allows more um, control. So I'm just doing that side on the corner there. That's helping out. 
I'm scoring the caulk again. So we did have to take out some nails that were still in there. So we just did that. I tried to clean up as um, we went to try to minimize the mess. Because again, this was like at 11 o'clock at night and our kids were at homecoming. So we were trying to hurry up and do things um, as quickly as possible before we had to pick them up. So then we're doing underneath the island and that part to me was actually the scariest because I felt like if we took that off, like the, the countertop was gonna fall down. So um, yeah, it was a little intimidating. So we're just prying it off there. Some pieces did break, but for the most part, it stayed in one solid piece. So as you see that big old gaping hole that no one filled in when they put my um, island together. So when you're taking things down, you really see that a home is just, it's ugly underneath. Everything else makes it beautiful, but it's really ugly. So this is the last piece. And at this point, there's no turning back, guys. All right guys, so that's a wrap. So I think we accomplished a lot tonight, but I'm tired. So Matt and I are gonna call it a night and then come back and finish up tomorrow. So this is like literally my first time cutting anything with a saw. So we just bought this yesterday. Um, don't expect any miracles, but I'm just doing a couple practice cuts right now. So we just, we're gonna get into it, right? Nothing to it, but do it. All right? Got it, babe. First. never um, loaded a nail gun. Um, Matt has some problems the first time he did it, so I figured it out. So you put the um, brad nails in here. Then for this one, you have to lift up just a tad bit. I can't do it like that. Who got the problems now? <laughs> Shut up. There you go. And just like that. So try it again. So you just bring it down here all the way to the end slide, make sure that this piece goes underneath the nails, like that. <laughs> okay, do it again. Okay, if that piece will go under the nails, I just did it. Hmm, okay, so this piece right here will basically stop right here at the bottom of the nails. This piece here will go up and over the nail. <laughs> okay. Mother. First timer. <laughs> okay, it was working like all these dang other times I did, and now the crap don't want to work. Okay. Okay, so now you see, there goes that. This goes over. I'm not doing it again because it took forever. I didn't quit. I know, I didn't quit that. No, just push it up. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is the first time we got one. This is proof we are not professionals. <laughs> it hurt. Tell it the ain't. people we are not professionals. We're not professionals. I'm trying not to cuss because I hurt. <laughs> Be safe, y'all. <laughs> so just make sure that your walls are as smooth as possible. So therefore, your new um, baseboards will be as flush as possible. So let's make sure that you get it nice and clean, scrape off any of that extra caulking that's there because trust me, a lot of these builders use too much.
All right, so we're just cleaning up the space there. Matt's making sure it's nice and clean so he can install the next piece that he cut. And he did a really good job of cutting all the pieces and nailing them in, so kudos, babe. And another thing too, um, every time that we would use a brad nailer, because we had our kids around, we would take out the, um, the battery just as an extra precaution, but that's something that you don't have to do, but we would take it out each time we would set it down. So just something you can do when you have kids around as a safety precaution. So just making sure everything's level. And by all means, guys, this is not a tutorial because I can't even explain how we did it. <laughs> I'm just going with it. <laughs> So now he's putting on the top piece, and again, that's the new framing of the island. So just making sure that's done. All right, you guys, so we tried to cut around the island supports. Is that the one that you This did? side is, a, <laughs> I did this side with a handsaw, but then this side with a jigsaw. A little better. A little better, a little better. So make sure you get a jigsaw. That's my point. Okay, guys, so. We have to bring the saw in the in the house because it's now, what time is it? 9.49 at night. And um, yeah, so we need to make some final cuts. It's been a long night. We had a lot of things to do. Our kids went to a homecoming game. So we're coming back to finish up the island. Um, the goal tonight is to finish to get it fully framed out. Um, what, fully framed out. Also, all of the nail holes filled in, sanded, caulked, and then tomorrow we should be able to paint. So. It's my first time uh, cutting on the, what is this thing? Miter saw. Miter saw, <laughs> on the miter saw. And um, yeah, so we, another reason why we bought a miter saw is we kept borrowing things from my cousin that's in construction, you guys know, father and son's construction. And so Matt felt like it was now the time to invest in our own um, items. So I figured why not? So let's go. So how do I do it? <laughs> Right, so that's already set up. So you see that, um, push your finger up against the, the left side. Right see that little small trigger? Right here? Yeah. Okay. Flip that and then pull the trigger. Together? Yeah. It's not doing anything. Like push to the side and then pull the big trigger. Ooh, and then just, just push down. But turn it on and then go down? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Or should I just put the wood on there and no. then turn it on? Turn it on and then chop down. <laughs> okay, so this is what the last piece for the top of the um, trim. And then the next pieces are gonna be the four um, individual pieces to frame out the four boxes. So let's go ahead and put it on. So we didn't do any bevel cuts. Um, again, this is our first time doing this. We just wanted to keep it, um, everything square and simple. <laughs> So now we're just spacing out the boxes. And so Matt cut just a regular piece of wood that we bought to the desired um, space. So the spaces um, in each box are approximately 21.5 inches. But um, as you can see, we keep looking back at it, checking, making sure. And this is where we found a little bit of a problem. Uh, help. So, yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's important to pay attention in math class. I was not good at math whatsoever. Um, so our spacing was off. So it's important that you get the math down packed or it'll throw off the whole project and it just will not look right. So um, we were debating how, how it kept coming out wrong and we would recut, look again, recut. But again, we're only cutting the temporary board that we bought or the um, board to do the spacing, not the actual board and batten. And um, so we just did a Google search and Matt said to Google how to do it and Google is your friend. So I just kept, I put in how to calculate board and batten spacing. And so this great little article came up and just says, um, add to your number of spaces to get the number of battens on the wall. Now multiply your batten width by the number of battens. Subtract that number from your total wall length. Divide that number by the number of spaces you calculated earlier. And that will be the exact spacing between each batten. So however you calculate that, that's the answer. And so it ended up being 21.5 inches per box. 
All right, so now that we got the math part down, it's actually coming to life. So you see that first batten on there? Oh my gosh, that box looks amazing. And it's just coming along. And I think in this video, I have like four or five different outfit changes because this is a span of a few days. So please don't judge me. That's one of my pajamas I go to bed in, guys, okay? So Matt's just doing the um, corners for us. He did a really good job on that. And the corners we use one by twos to frame that out. So as you can see, it's really starting to take shape, guys. It looks so great. So all of that is the wood filler. Um, again, we're just putting everything and all the holes. This project, we had maybe too many holes in what we needed, which was necessary. So of course, this is our very first time doing this. So I'm just going in with the caulking and making sure that everything is seamed properly. All right, guys, so I think we're gonna call it a wrap. Um, so everything is framed out on my island. I've already went in and put the plastic wood that we used and it's been sanded down. Also, we've put in the shoe molding is what this is called here. So it will match the existing, existing molding that's around the house. So that's been installed. We need one more piece. Um, we'll have to get that in the morning, but we're tired, we're exhausted, but I think we did a pretty darn good job, babe. Excuse my kitchen, um, it's been a night. And uh, yeah, it'll be beautiful in the morning. So we'll see you guys back in the morning. And so I'm just going around this morning <clears throat> and um, softening out some areas and making sure it's smooth because today is paint day. So I'm super excited about that. These were some areas of that plastic um, wood filler that we had to do last night in the last pieces and finishing touches. Everything else though has already been, um, what is this, sandpaper <laughs> or um, buffed and sanded down so it's ready to go. And uh, again, we're just gonna come back after we go get the kids some donuts this morning. And we need to go to Home Depot to get a last um, shoe mold for this area right here. So we were almost good on all the products or pro pieces of this project that we needed, but that was the last piece that we need. So I think we did pretty good as far as measuring everything, making sure that we had enough product. And we just were a little short, and that was just for an adjustment of um, cuts and things like that. So, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this off and we'll come back. All right, so here's the fun part. We're making those final touches so we can get ready for paint, yay! I feel like I wanted to paint it like as soon as we put the board up, but I knew that wasn't the right order that things needed to go in. And of course, you guys know I could not take my kitchen looking like that anymore. So I'm cleaning it and Matt and my daughter Leah are helping out with starting the painting um, of our island. Leah was a big helper and she helped mom and dad out. Um, so. Thank you, Leah, for helping us out, even though sometimes she was too much of a help. <laughs> All right, so because my husband and I are such sticklers and making sure that it's perfect, we had like a regular little small tiny painter's brush to paint in the little areas around the shoe molding. All right, so here is called a receptacle and Matt's just uh, changing that out because we wanted to have everything changed to black. So the outlet itself, we were changing to black and then also the receptacle. So instead of that white part where the plug actually goes into, that'll be black as well. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing this, I encourage you to hire an electrician. We made sure countless times over and over that the electricity, ugh, electricity was turned off. Um, you know, I love my husband and I need him around. So we made sure that he was safe doing this. Since he's done some projects in our previous home, he felt very comfortable doing this. 
Um, so he did this around and we have three outlets on the island. So he repeated the same process on each one. And then there goes the black one, it looks so good. You know, I didn't even know that they sold these in different colors as far as the receptacle itself until we saw a YouTube video and someone changed out um, where the actual plug goes in from white to black. So we knew doing this project, we needed to get it. So there you see that was the original outlet cover and it was like a matte black but it just didn't go. So we decided to buy some Bayer spray paint which uh, with a semi gloss and I think it looks so much better. So it blends in, it still has a little bit of pop because it is a semi gloss and all blacks are not created equally. So that just looks so much better than compared before. Okay guys. so. My experience with this project, it was daunting at first, but as we progress, I started to enjoy it. So much so that <laughs> I've had Matt do lots of projects around our home. As you can see this one right behind me, um, we will be showing another video soon regarding that. So um, it really motivated us. I would say, um, I would highly encourage you if you have any DIYs that you're thinking of doing, do them because you never know how beautiful it's gonna come out until you do it. And then also gives you the added confidence that you got this. And if you make a mistake, it's okay. You can patch over it, start over, but it makes me feel, I don't know, grateful to have my home and to see a project that I've did each day that I walk into that space. So I encourage you, you got this. So let me remind you of how the kitchen looked before. And then now let me show you what my kitchen looks like now. I can't get over it. I'm telling you, each time that I go into the kitchen now, like I scream and say, oh my gosh, look at my island. But a lot more high pitched than that. But it looks so good, guys. Um, I think we nailed it. Like it gives all the vibes in that kitchen. Um, that black island really makes it the kitchen pop. It's the focal point now and it's absolutely stunning. So I love it. I can't wait to do more projects. So let me know what you guys think. So thank you so much for watching this week, this Georgia Clay. Please make sure in the comments that you let me know what you guys think. Um, let me know if we nailed this DIY or if we failed it, be nice. Um, but no, I always want your guys' honest opinion. So let me know what we how we did. And um, please make sure that you like and subscribe and share it with a friend too. Maybe they're gonna be encouraged by this video. Again, this is not a tutorial. It was just something fun that me and my husband wanted to do to make our kitchen. And I really feel like that island gives it all the vibes. So again, have a great day. See you guys next week. Bye.